It's a beautiful day for baseball, and live from the Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati, Sportsnet LA presents the Los Angeles Dodgers and the Cincinnati Reds in the final game of this four-game series. Hi again, everybody. Charlie Steiner, Oral Hershiser, and Nomar garcia Par. After the game is done, the Dodgers fly home. A weekend series awaits with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Here in Cincinnati, the Dodgers wrapping up a seven-game road trip. They've won four of six so far. Zach Greinke has been terrific on the road. The Dodgers have as well, 22-13 and 13 away from Dodger Stadium. He's 4-1 and one in his seven road starts. You know what? He's been fantastic. And to finish this road trip on a high note, Zach Greinke on the mound is a great thing for the Dodgers. He had an exceptional outing against the Cincinnati Reds his last time out. He struck out 11 of them. The split finger was really on. The one Achilles heel for Zach Greinke has been the home run ball. Nine home runs in 79 innings. So here in the Great American Ballpark on a day game when a ball could carry, he's going to have to keep the ball down and keep it on the ground. And offensively for the Dodgers, one guy to keep an eye on today is Andre Ethier, who has done well against Simon. Well, you got a righty on the mound, Andre Ethier in the lineup, and like you said, against Alfredo Simon, he's two for two. The other, when he faced him back there at Dodger Stadium, he had a bases loaded, three run triple and also he added a home run against Alfredo Simon and the key to getting to Alfredo Simon who's had 10 of 12 quality starts this year is that you get him early because only once has he given up a run past the fourth inning. Of course the Dodgers knocked out Simon in the fourth inning in their last meeting last month back in Los Angeles and we'll be back with the lineups and first pitch Dodgers and Reds it's getaway day from Cincinnati. The sunny skies on this Thursday matinee getaway day for the Dodgers. Seventh and final game of the road trip. They've gone four up and two down. They are four and two against the Reds this year. Two and one back at Dodger Stadium. Two and one here at the Great American Ballpark. And here is the lineup that Don Mattingly's put together. 
It'll be D. Gordon leading off at second base, and for the seventh time this year, Justin Turner batting second. He's had a terrific road trip. Puig and Gonzalez and Kemp in the middle. Andre Ethier's been hot of late, and especially against Cincinnati. Fedorovich, Rojas, and Granke, the bottom third of the lineup, and they are facing 33-year-old Alfredo Simon making his 13th start of the year, and what a pleasant surprise he has been for the Reds. Eight up and three down at a 3.15 ERA. And a pleasant surprise because most of his career has spent as a reliever. This year as a starter has been outstanding. Comes at you with a mid-90s fastball with some late movement, a cutter, a curveball, and you don't want to get behind him. Alfredo Simon in the count because when it's on, he has a split finger that falls off the table. 6'6 six, six and 267 pounds. He's 32, hardly an overnight success, turned pro in 2000. Last year, his first season in Cincinnati, a real breakout year, all out of the bullpen. And uh, in 2013, 63 appearances, a 287 ERA. And so now he has become a starter, and it looks like he has secured a spot in the rotation. He and Tony Singrani were battling for that last spot with uh, Matt Latos coming off the disabled list on Saturday. And so Simon, with his 8-3 and three record, he has struck out 45 and walked only 19 in 74 innings. And as Nomar mentioned, once you get past the fourth inning, he has been unhittable, but the Dodgers were able to knock him out in their meeting back at Dodger Stadium a couple of weeks back. So Gordon steps in, and away we go, and after the game, the Dodgers fly home for a weekend series with the Arizona Diamondbacks. First pitch of the game is high and away. One ball and no strikes. There's about a one in five chance of rain here today around this part of the country this time of day. That's a uh, house money. Just like last night, Gordon begins the game by bouncing in. Defensively behind Alfredo Simon. Basically, it's the usual suspects, except for center field and left field. Bernardina in center, giving Hamilton the day off, and Schumacher is in left field, giving Ryan Ludwig the afternoon off. Mezzarocco behind the plate, Frazier, Cozart, Phillips, and Votto in the infield. So underway, one out, nobody on. Justin Turner coming in. Turner, uh, Turner having a good series and, of course, a very good road trip. And he takes a strike. It's nothing in one. The customary two hole that Hanley Ramirez has occupied. He's having another day off because of the shoulder issues that he's having. Nothing in two to Turner. So Hanley Ramirez may or may not be back tomorrow at the moment. He is, as they are wont to say, day to day. But it sure looks like A.J. Ellis will be ready to go when the Dodgers return home tomorrow. Now the 0-2, Turner takes outside. Puig on deck. Dodgers 4-2 on the trip, 22-13 on the road. Best record in the National League. Now, they can only write their ship at home. Six game homestand beginning to bar a night, and Turner takes low. Mattingly was asked the other day about the disparity in the record. Dodgers 16, or rather 13 and 19 at home, and 22 and 13 away. And an interesting theory. Here is the 2 2. Broken bat, leader into left field for a base hit. And so Turner is aboard, smashing a piece of wood and getting a base hit out of the deal. His theory was that at Dodger Stadium with the spacious new clubhouse, it's one of those, well, you got the quiet room, you got the weight room, you got the training room, you got the big clubhouse, and there's not a lot of, well, esprit de corps. On the road in the smaller clubhouses, everybody's together. They're on the road together. They're in the buses together. Does that make any sense? I think it makes sense. I don't know if that equates always to winning and losing and uh, you know the lineup not functioning sometimes and the bullpen not functioning sometimes and all the different issues that have happened on the field. But I could understand team chemistry being upset a little bit by that. Well didn't he he talk about that the other day when he was upset just kind of going off about the team saying I don't want why don't you ask them instead of bothering me I'll ask them we're just not playing well right now. Weed with a base hit into right field. 
And so the Dodgers have first and second with one man out and Adrian Gonzalez coming up. And I think a lot's to be said. I, well, I don't know how you feel. You always hear people, well, it's not about team chemistry. It's about coming together, figuring out how to play together. And just that's okay. But I think team chemistry is important because you're going out there and competing and you want to like the guys and pull for the guys and, and come together on a daily basis. And this team, they talk about it, you know, amongst themselves. And we talk to them and they 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 all get along. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't see any fights breaking out. We don't see guys not hanging together. We go out on the road. We go to a restaurant. and We'll see eight or ten of them over at a table eating together. But, you know, you have to define what chemistry is. Chemistry is above and beyond getting along with one another, which is certainly important. But in terms of lineup stability, fielding mm -hmm. stability, for instance, we were talking to, to D. Gordon this morning after that great catch that he made yesterday. He said, well, didn't you hear Yasiel Puig coming at you? And you would have lost that collision. And he said, well, they now have signals on, on plays like that as Gonzalez with a fly ball to right. And Bruce will make the catch. And he knew that he was not going to be stampeded by Puig because when Puig wants the ball, he whistles. He doesn't say, I got it. He hears a loud, piercing whistle. When he didn't hear the whistle, he knew he could go all out and not run into that brick wall. That's chemistry. Yeah. And that's why you often hear, you know, we've heard Adrian Gonzalez. And here we're going to go back to that play, exact play you're talking about. The chemistry, the communication, the familiarity you get with playing around somebody on a daily basis. And you're right. Uh, if uh, Yasiel would have ran into D, he would have lost that matchup right there. But that's where you hear a lot of players saying Let a consistent lineup or, mm -hmm. you know, playing on a consistent basis, not only for yourself, but also for the guys you play next to. Matt Kemp takes outside one ball, no strikes. So it's not a, like sitting around a campfire and singing Kumbaya. It's a matter of a group <laughs> playing together as a unit, traveling together. And so when they say chemistry, it, it has a lot of different definitions, it seems. And so with two out and two on in the first, Kemp at 247, five home runs, 18 <laughs> runs batted in. One ball, one strike. And you were talking about your communication with uh, Troy O'Leary. Yeah. We, we knew exactly how we were going to peel off when we would have that in between or which way we were going to go once one of us called each other off so we wouldn't collide. We did collide once though. And you learn not to do it he, again. He, he went the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> and he actually said that he goes I don't know what I was thinking. I know I'm supposed to we, we collided. And I was joking with him because the next inning he had to come out and I was like haha you lost I stayed in the game. <laughs> Two on two out of two one count to Kemp. Dodgers looking to end this road trip. Winning five of the seven. Outside. Three balls and a strike. So a little extra effort out of Alfredo Simon today. I'm sure he, that memory of getting beat up by the Dodgers back in L.A. is still with him and. He's overthrowing a few pitches and missing his spots. 14 pitches, seven strikes, seven balls. Lasted three and two thirds on May 27th and gave up five runs and five hits. And lined into right center field for a base hit. In the score is Turner. Puig is on his way to third and RBI single for Matt Kemp and the Dodgers draw first blood. It's one to nothing. Two hard RBI yesterday was huge for the Reds. They got a three spot on Hunjin Ryu all with two outs two two out walks. The Dodgers built this inning with a couple of hits one a bleeder and one the base hit by Puig to right field and they come in to count when Kemp gets the two out bingle. Of course, Kemp didn't last long last night. Took a call, third strike, was thrown out of the game immediately thereafter, and so he's starting the day anew. Well, hopefully, when he if he gets near third base, where the home plate umpire yesterday is now there, uh, Seth Buckminster, maybe he's just rounding it so he doesn't have to get there, and so he doesn't have to talk to him too much. So I really, I really like that at bat by Matt Kemp. He really just kind of shortened up a little bit and just kind of went the other way with it to get that RBI. Now here's Ethier, 258, three home runs, 26 runs batted in. And he takes a strike, it's nothing in one.
Eighth year on the trip, a six for 17. A double and an RBI, and he's got runners at the corners with two out. There's a strike. Eighth year with a good game against Simon back at Dodger Stadium. A 395 foot home run and a bases clearing triple. Two hits, four RBIs. And so Ethier today batting sixth. Ramirez out another day with the shoulder. Probably be able to pinch hit. Throwing's been the issue with that shoulder for Hanley Ramirez. The one two. In foul territory, Frazier's got plenty of room and that'll end the inning. But singles for Turner, Puig, and an RBI hit for Kemp. Give the Dodgers an early 1 0 lead. It'll be a Zach Greinke's turn to make his 14th start. Eden, here's the lineup that Brian Price has put together for the Reds. Beginning with Skip Schumacher, Dodger last year. Frazier batting second. Votto off the disabled list for a couple of days now. Then Phillips and Bruce and Mezzarocco. Mezzarocco's been struggling of late. Bernardina in center field. Zach Cozart at shortstop. Alfredo Simon pitching and batting ninth. And 30 year old Zach Greinke making his 40th, his 14th start of the year. He's an Iron Man. 31 and 10 since joining the club in 2013. Zach Greinke has been Mr. Consistency, but really, really good. Not quite as good in his last few starts. Would love to really get his effectiveness up this outing. Schumacher delivers. Well, Greinke delivers a strike, and it's nothing in one to skip Schumacher at 209. One home run and seven runs batted in. Greinke in his last three starts overall, one and one, and an ERA of. 435. Well, you and I have talked about that. It, it's, you know, they mentioned his last three starts, and you look at that ERA, but still, I mean, the, he just set the bar so high, hasn't he? I mean, what we expect from him on a every time he's out there. He's had 41 starts with the Dodgers. They are 31 and 10 when he makes the start. That's a high bar. Yeah. And it's not just because they've given a lot of run support. He has just pitched outstanding. His ERA right now this year is a point lower than his career ERA. And his overall record since coming to the Dodgers 23 and 6. Into center field sprinting in is Ethier can't get it. His first step was to go back and that cost him. Defensively for the Dodgers today behind Granky. Ethier surrounded by Kemp and Puig in the outfield. 
Turner Rojas is at short. And the Ramirez has the shoulder. Not a good one. D. Gordon at second base. Adrian Gonzalez at first. Fedorovich is behind the plate. So the single for Schumacher. The Reds are in business. And Todd Frazier coming up. Frazier leads the Reds in home runs and RBIs, although the Dodgers have kept him quiet in the series so far. Votto on deck. To right. And Puig heading back. Puig's at the wall. He leaps and it's gone. A two-run home run for Todd Frazier, his 14th of the year. And the Reds take a 2-1 to lead. That's the 10th home run of the year given up by Greinke. Well, we see that ball in the outer half, and I'll tell you, Frazier did not square this ball up. Actually, actually, Yasiel Puig first came in and then backed up because that one was just a byproduct of this ballpark going out for him. It seemed to just carry right on out because it wasn't hit extremely well. And into left center field, that's going to go to the wall. And Votto will arrive at second base with a stand-up double. Three batters, a single, a double, and a home run. Give it up by Greinke. Well, Skip Schumacher's ball is not hit very well at all. Todd Frazier's, for me, was a routine fly ball that just happens to be carrying here today with a little breeze going out to right. This was a good piece of hitting. A breaking ball first pitch that Joey Votto stays on. Remember, Greinke did not face Votto the last time Greinke struck out 11 reds against the Dodgers. Otto was on the DL. And he is three games removed. So on six pitches, the Reds have two runs and three hits. And Phillips steps into the batter's box. Phillips with four home runs, fouls it back. It's nothing in one. So Oral, the nickname Great American Small Park, uh, was that? Wow. Uh, the re <laughs> it's well, you, like that. You know, the thing that told me that the, the wind really took the ball is that Yasiel broke almost in or sideways on yeah. it like it was going to be routine. And then all of a sudden he is sprinting to the wall like this ball is going to go way over my head. And then it got out of here. Foul pass Billy Hatcher, the first base coach. Well, so you happily named this place the Great American Small Park. On Monday night, Ryan Ludwig hit a 342-foot home run, and the shot by Frazier, 344, which is a routine fly ball in most places. 0-2 to Phillips with Bruce on deck. Cranky deals. Defense here just does not have the arc that most places have that as it starts to creep towards the center the left center and right center just more of a straight line here than the big arcs that you see it's only 370 to the power alley in right center 375 to left center we have a body of water in right field in a street that they had to worry about in left field. The Ohio River and beyond the river is Covington Kentucky. One ball two strikes still nobody out. Here in the bottom of the first Dodgers scored one in the top half. Brandon Phillips, four home runs in 23, runs batted in. Zach Greinke gives up his 10th home run of the year here in the first inning. Votto with decent speed and a short lead at second base. To the right side. Oh, that's 
Booted by Gonzalez, covering it first is Granky. It's too late. Runners at first and third, and nobody out. Terrific play by Gordon. Heads up to backup. But when Adrian Gonzalez misses the ball, let's check to see if Zach Greinke breaks stride. I think he breaks stride a little tiny bit, and that half a step of breaking stride of watching the error makes him late to the bag. You see him break there and see... He really broke late at the very beginning of the play, thinking that the ball, the angle it had, it wouldn't be to Adrian Gonzalez. He thought it was originally just going to be to D. Gordon, and Adrian Gonzalez would have the bag. So he was late breaking from the mound. So they're going to have a replay review on that. First base umpire Brian Knight. And the crew chief, Jim Reynolds, will go get the headphones on and talk to the folks in New York. It's either going to be scored an E3 or a 3-4-1 put out. <laughs> See, we have a look at this one again. That one's really close. Hmm. Just wondering if they got there at the same time or if that foot actually beats Phillips. That angle, he looks like he might have got the foot first before Phillips gets there. But is that going to be enough to overturn it right there? Yeah, right there. You see it. I think he gets him. Well, we know both feet touch the bag. Phillips and Greinke. Now it's only about does the ball beat Phillips' foot. Heads up play by D. Gordon. Backing up Gonzalez. You know, and... And he also, I, I give Brandon Phillips some credit. He did his job. You know, he was behind in the count and was trying to move the runner over. Let's not forget, man on second, nobody out. Still went to the right side. And as you said, good job by D. Gordon to be there. Meanwhile, Granky still looking to record his first out of the inning. He looks out to me. Yep. Definitely from that out. angle. And when you toggle that frame by frame. It looks like the ball is in the leather. And the foot's not quite on the bag. Well, he definitely catches it before Phillips is there. So it's caught. And he's not there yet. So right there. And I think Granky's foot's on the bag yep. right there. Brian that, Knight and Jim Reynolds still that's what listening to the see. folks in New York. <laughs> that's what we see here, right? <laughs> and we don't get a vote. We are the only ones on TV today. So what we see is what they're seeing in New York. And the decision is out. So a great play by D. Gordon. Votto goes to third. So score at 1-4-3. 3 4 one. Yeah. <laughs> That's important in horse racing. <laughs> you got the trifecta. <laughs> but on the scorecard, it's an out. One out. Votto's at third, and Bruce is coming up. Infield halfway for Jay Bruce. Who takes high and inside. One ball, no strikes. Bruce, two for four last night, including a home run in the sixth. It was his fifth of the year. And a ground ball to second base. Gordon freezes the runner at third and throws out. Bruce, two out. Gordon is just getting better and better at second base. He's just looking so comfortable. And also what you see when you move, I'll tell you, when you're moving from one spot, you're so used to, say, being a shortstop, moving over to second base. But the instinct as well. Ground ball there. He was looking at Vado to see if he was going to take off at all. But I always say when you move over, you're, you're before the play happens, you're thinking about a thousand things going through your head. Okay, if it's hit here, where do I go? If it's hit... 
now it just seems to be just not thinking at all. Very instinctual. Yep. Devin Mezzarocco at 311, nine home runs and 27 runs batted in. Well, let's see if that replay play and a jump starts Granky here. Blocked nicely by Fedorovich. It's a little disconcerting when the first three batters of the ball game get on board and two of them come in to score. Roger Bernardina is on deck. Very humid overcast afternoon in Cincinnati. And as we've already discovered Steve Smith had a pepper dot knocks it down. The ball is going to travel today. That's the open side of the ballpark there where the Ohio River is in right field and it seems like the, the wind comes around the building and then shoots out to right. Bezzarocco out of Rhode Island. Fouls it back. Days like this where you're a hitter. You want to be in the lineup because you know the ball's carrying extremely well. The other thing, you also like taking batting practice on these days because it also boosts your confidence because you're like, man, I'm feeling strong today. Balls are just getting out of here. <laughs> I think I said Mezzarocco's out of Rhode Island. He's from Puxatawney, Pennsylvania. Every day's Groundhog Day. The 2 2. Just inside three and two. So Granky's next pitch will be his 20th. It seems like he's been out there a while and it's been more time than pitches. 20 is acceptable. He'd love to be around 14 to 15 pitches. Call strike three and that will end the inning. But the Reds come up with two runs, three hits, and leave one. And after one, they lead the Dodgers two to one. Ballpark right now the Dodgers down two to one to the Cincinnati Reds as we make our way to the top of the second inning Tim Fedorovich set to lead off the inning for the Los Angeles Dodgers you heard Charlie Steiner talking earlier today about how shortstop Hanley Ramirez scratched from the starting lineup yesterday not in the lineup again today dealing with that AC joint the right inflammation in his shoulder basically where the collarbone and the shoulder meet he played in 86 games last year has played in 63 this year so he's missed 80 games since joining the Dodgers the club is 40 and 40 in the that time 
This is not a DL stint by any stretch. The Dodgers did not take live BP, so he was not able to deal with any fielding or anything today. Don Mattingly saying they were going to hold off on that anyway. He could come in to pinch hit, guys. And Fedorovich. Thanks, Alana. And it's one ball, one strike. Tim Fedorovich hitting 123. Seven for 57. Fedorovich, Rojas, and Granke, the bottom third of the Dodger order, and, and takes outside. Two balls and one strike. Gutierrez started last night. Dodgers were back at the ballpark a little after 9 o'clock this morning, some earlier than that. Day game after night game, but it's also getaway day. Three and one to Fedorovich. Fredo Simon, like Zach Greinke, both in search of their ninth win of the year. Three and two. There's only one nine-game winner in the National League, and that's Adam Wainwright. Simon has been an enormous surprise. You, you talked about it, Charlie. Beginning of the year, they didn't know who that fifth starter was going to be with Matt Latos going on the DL. Latos going to start on Saturday, they say. A little chopper up the third base line. Simon gets Fedorovich by a step. And Simon did not start last year or the year before. Made 16 starts and 23 appearances for the Orioles in 2011. But he appears to have secured a role in Brian Price's rotation. And again, for the most part, until this year, he was a journeyman starter, but has found his rhythm and did out of the bullpen. And now he's starting again and doing awfully well. A lot of times, the difference between a really good arm that can start and a really good arm that can is only a reliever is somebody who can get around the line at the second and third time and that's what he's really showing now he's always had outstanding stuff but he's been able to command the secondary stuff so that he can go through the lineup multiple times and Nomar gave us the little nugget on he hasn't given up a run after the fourth inning that's absolutely amazing or only given up one one, one time his last outing against the Phillies is when he finally has given up a run past the fourth inning there's only two times in his 12 starts where he didn't get to the fourth inning. Hmm. Dodgers knocked him out mm -hmm. when they saw him a couple of weeks ago back at Dodger Stadium after three and two thirds. He's no kid. He's 33. But, but I, I, it really is impressive because usually after you see him maybe two or three times through the lineup, you're going, okay, after that, we should hopefully have figured him out to try to put some runs on the board. Right. And, he continues to have good stuff and can still mix his pitches and keep right. you off of it. Because right now, as you're watching him and as you're facing him, if you're the Dodger hitters, you're trying to see okay, what pitches can I eliminate that he's not able to throw for strikes right now. It's just breaking ball, whether it's his fastball, whatever it may be. On two and two, Rojas stays alive. Didn't look like the swing of a middle infielder that's just trying to make contact myself. Other than that last one? That was a little big yeah, for you, me, for my you liking. If you didn't know the count and you saw that swing, you're thinking, oh, wow, he had a 2 0 count and was really trying to let it fly. I didn't think there was a count. It looked like a home run derby swing. <laughs> at four home runs and 13 runs batted in in 51 games at Albuquerque. Rojas stays alive again. Starting to walk around the whole home plate area like he's Tony Pena. Tony Pena used to back up when he make a bad swing or overswing. Great catcher from the Pittsburgh Pirates. And been a manager and a bench coach. He'd, oh, he'd walk everywhere. Two and two with one out in the second. Two one Cincinnati. Through the middle. And a base hit. A one out single for Miguel Rojas. Who is now three for seven in the big leagues. 
And Cranky coming up. Cranky is five for 25. Some pitchers might be called upon to sacrifice here, but he's such a good hitter. That may not necessarily be so. Last year's Silver Slugger winner, Don Mattingly, in his media scrum today, was asked why Granke was batting ninth. Well, he's going to punt and foul. He's setting him up. Punted foul. Now, now gets swing a away. Ball and swing right. away. I know. Well, Beckett yeah. did that the other night, expecting the punt. A little. Butcher boy swing over the head of Todd Frazier, who is in on the infield grass yeah. as he is now. I'm surprised he's still coming in. Here's a guy who can handle the bat. I wouldn't be charging so hard with a guy who can bring it back and do that. His health insurance is paid up. And Cranky angry with himself. It's nothing in two. When Don was asked in the media scrum about why Granky's batting ninth with Fedorovich and Rojas down there, he said, you know what, he's a really good hitter, but he's in there to mainly pitch, and we don't want him moving around mentally in the batting order. Just let him concentrate on defense. Well, he squares to bunt on 0 and 2 and takes a call, strike three. First strikeout for Simon. It's the second out of the second. Or a, with a good hitter like Zach Granke, strike. How upset is he with himself going back to the dugout right now? And does that carry over on the mound? You know, I did everything I could to try and get rid of my at bat before I went out onto the mound. And but not getting your bunt down can really irritate you because it's one of the things that these guys pride themselves on, and they all do exceptionally well. Now with two out, D Gordon. Takes a ball low, one ball and no strikes. Gordon bounced to first in his first at bat. Short lead for Rojas as Gordon takes a strike. It's one ball, one strike. Overcast and humid on this Thursday afternoon on the banks of the Ohio River. Strike. Home plate umpire is Manny Gonzalez in his fourth big league season. He is the first big league umpire out of Venezuela. Born, raised, and lives in Caracas. Highly regarded around the league. One ball and two strikes. Gordon on the trip is six for 16. Did you play winter ball, Omar? I didn't. I played uh, one year in the fall, and I played in the Arizona Fall League. I never. I played a year in Venezuela and a year in the Dominican Republic. So I brought up Manny Gonzalez. Thinking of Caracas. Inside two and two. I played for a team called Valencia Magianis. I think it's the Sailors. It's quite an experience. It almost feels like triple A and a half down there because you get the, the, the local native Venezuelan guys in the second half of the season. And then when you're the Dominican, you get the big league Dominicans in the second half of the season after they take some time off. And it's a nice place to go and face three or four big league hitters as a minor leaguer and realize that you can get them out to realize you don't have to face a whole big league lineup but you get to face a partial big league lineup and it starts to give you confidence that even as a double a guy or a triple a guy boy I, I can get a big leaguer out and the fans are into it oh they're really into it and it's it, it is really emotional for the local big leaguers and minor leaguers off the foot of D Gordon a little bit of the feel like that the World Baseball Classic has. Mm -hmm. They're playing for the pride of their hometown. Well, let me see where D. Gordon fouls this oh. off the top of his foot. Mm. 
So he's got a sore right hip that he's back on the lineup from, and now he's got a sore right, right foot. Right. Well, that's oftentimes you mentioned you're talking about the winter ball. You'll see guys have those hot, really good starts at the beginning of the year, and it's mm -hmm. those guys coming from winter ball are playing there. And even talking to some trainers, they said, do you, what do you see as guy? you know, is there something they do in the offseason or players that maybe reduce some of the injuries? He says people who play winter ball often have a reduced chance, but they don't maybe last as long toward the back end of the season. Three and two to Gordon. And not from injuries, for so to speak, but just from so the fatigue. fatigue. Yeah. It was Ryan Vogel's song about four years ago in winter ball in Venezuela. Where his career was resurrected, had a terrific winter ball season. Hanley Mullins, Hensley Mullins, the uh, batting coach for the Giants, was the manager down there, and uh, said, "Hey, Vogel song can pitch." And it came down to the Dodgers and Giants. There's a ground ball to short, and Gordon's going to be thrown out, and that'll end the inning. And so Vogel song, who was originally signed with the Giants when he was coming up. Decided to go to San Francisco and not LA, all because of winter ball in Venezuela. MLB.com at bat app and a subscription to its premium features on his favorite smartphone or tablet are perfect for Father's Day. Dad will have access to features such as live look ins, instant replay, live audio, free MLB.tv game of the day, and more. For details, visit MLB.com. Bottom third of the Reds order in the bottom half of the second, beginning with Roger Bernardina giving Billy Hamilton. This Thursday afternoon off Bernardino the former Washington National with a bunt up the third baseline and all Justin Turner could do is hope it would go foul and it did. It's a wise choice by Justin Turner because Bernardino and that's what you're supposed to do as you're bunting you either, your thought is I'm laying this down it's either fair or foul. So really to put it down the line as close as possible. You saw Justin Turner when he charged that ball because he's playing off the line. He had a tough angle to get that if that stayed fair. So he said uh, my only hope is that it actually keeps going foul and it did. Bernardina hitting 167 with nine hits fouls it back. It's nothing in two. Who was it Lenny Randall about 30 years ago on the little bunt down the third base line on artificial turf tried to blow it foul. I think you're right. They determined that that was illegal. <laughs> a, a sudden gust of wind didn't need an official review. The O2. They just left. they determined that after he tried it that it was illegal because they probably didn't expect that to ever be part of the rule book. <laughs> uh, well, for one right. thing, when they wrote the rule book, there was no such thing as artificial turf. Right, that's a good point. 
No blowing the ball foul. The answer, my friend, was <laughs> blowing in the wind. Strike three. Second strikeout for Granke. First out of the second. How many years did you spin records, Charlie? <sighs> three, four years. Oh, read the news. All that stuff. Yeah. Wow. Back when there were 33 RPMs mm -hmm. and 45. 45. You didn't have 78s. So you're not that old. No. no. Around the house we did. Yeah, I saw them. I saw them around the house. And they all sounded scratchy. Even when they were new. I remember the Firestone Christmas album and the. My parents had a lot of Andy Williams al albums. <laughs> Petula Clark. Oh. I don't know that I strayed in that direction necessarily, but okay. Well, it's my mom and dad. <laughs> they were born in the 30s. Wow. God bless their soul. They're still alive, and they're probably watching. Here's the 1-1. One, one. They better be watching. <laughs> Two balls and a strike. Cozart, of course, was hit in the head the other night on a pitch by... Josh Beckett. He'd be down on the ground for a while. Got the ear flap. And he was able to stay in the game. Next at bat, he singled in a run. And of course, we were talking about it yesterday with the consciousness now of the possibilities of concussions. Everybody takes it very seriously. It used to be, you know, oh, he's got a headache, throw him in tomorrow. That ball hit the helmet so squarely it sounded like it hit his head. It was a scary sound. In the right, back goes Pui. Two out. Extra steps out there in right field for the ball when it's hit out there. But now, I mean, you, any ball hit off the bat after that home run by Frazier you're going well that's not a routine out you just you, you got to see the way the outfielders go after the ball because like you said when Frazier hit that we thought Yasiel had that easy and it carried right out of the ballpark even so it went all of 344 feet the narrowest part of Dodger Stadium of course left field and right field is 330 and so basically in the power alley here it was 343 so the runs count anyway, but it wasn't like it was a hard hit home run as Simon. Not much of a hitter. He's got a couple of hits in 23 at bats. And he has been struck out eight times. So the game changes here a little bit. And who could hit the most routine fly balls to the power alleys? You're going to win. Down in order go the Reds. Three strikeouts in the game for Granke. He has retired five in a row. We head to the third. Turner, Puig, and Gonzalez are coming up.
Turner, Puig, and Gonzalez will bat for the Dodgers in the third. Both pitchers have settled down after shaky first innings. The Dodgers scored a run in the first on singles by Turner and Puig and an RBI single for Kemp. And the Reds scored two in the bottom of the first. A Schumacher single to center and a Frazier home run over the wall in right. So to the third we go and Justin Turner who has had a terrific road trip and has done a great job filling in for the injured Juan Uribe. Turner on the trip is now nine for twenty. And lifting his average to a most respectable two eighty one. No balls and a strike. Justin has been a very nice sign and a very good find from Ned Paletti and his staff. I love the energy that he brings to the lineup when he's in there and even on the bench understanding his role. Not a guy who's super frustrated when he's not in the lineup. Frazier throws out turn for the first out of the third. And now here's Yasiel Puig. We're talking about it last night. Wherever he goes, for the first time, he is experiencing something entirely new. Wherever we go, he went into the hills and played in the snow the other day in Colorado. Went to the Cincinnati Zoo yesterday, the day before, and wrapped a boa constrictor around his neck. I'm not sure I would have done that, but so be it. But uh, he was at uh, the Empire State Building in New York, and each time, it's a totally new experience for him. His 40 game streak of getting on base hit walk hit by pitcher and error came to an end last night. When he went 0 for 4 and struck out three times. Like every good player does they start a new one got a base hit in his first at bat. Didn't take long did it. Four hits for the Dodgers three for Cincinnati. Not everybody's as good as you and Yasiel, no more. They can't start Stop. right away the next day. Stop. It's, it's the mindset. If it was just the mindset, everybody in this stadium would have a hitting streak. <laughs> <laughs> Including Charlie. Oh, please. <laughs> a man has to know his limitations. One ball and two strikes to Puig. Gonzalez on deck. Big soccer fan, World Cup yes, fan. Yes, yes, always, he is. As it's, he was chirping about it in Spanish, but I could tell he was talking oh, about soccer. We were talking about it. On one and two, drill to left. Schumacher in, out, and over, and makes the catch. It may not have been the most direct route, but he made the play. You said 4 p.m. Eastern time there. Uh, Oral World Cup starts. This ball's hit hit well. Just in the wrong place. You'll be watching right Oral. You'll be locked in the World Cup. I'll be watching when I'm hanging with you. OK. It's a good thing that the. Plane has. Uh, direct TV on it. Adrian Gonzalez two out and nobody on. So. Excited to see the game. And I don't know if that was our great traveling secretary Scott Akasaki doing, making sure we can have TVs on the plane, but I'm excited for that. Here's the 1 0. Two balls and no strikes. Kemp on deck. Gonzalez continues to struggle. Unusual to see an average of Gonzalez at 249, which has just gone down a tick or two. And a 1 2 3 inning for Alfredo Simon. Now they go across. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Correction, bottom half of the third. And the Reds will have the top third of their order coming up.
Schumacher, Frazier, and Votto will be coming up. Join us on the next episode of Backstage Dodgers as the Dodgers scouting department selects players during the recently completed MLB draft. Plus, don't miss Yasiel Puig and the team as they were in Colorado and played in the snow. Catch this new episode of Backstage Dodgers tonight at 7 o'clock on Sportsnet LA. So, Granky had a bit of a tough time in the first inning and basically settled down after a close play at first, a replay in which it was overruled and Brandon Phillips was out. Since then, he has retired six in a row, but the first three batters got aboard against him in the first inning a Schumacher single. A Frazier great American ballpark home run that traveled 344 feet and a Votto double since then. Six straight retired by Granke who delivers a strike and it's nothing in one. So whether that energized Granke or it was just a matter of karma whatever it is he has settled into the Granke we have grown accustomed to. And as good a defender at his position as there is in the game, one out. He has not committed an error since July 16th, 2010. Span of 118 games. Ends up in a very good fielding position in his follow through. Big league pitchers and big league pitching coaches will tell you the first job is to get the hitter out. But if you can end up in a good fielding position and be a good pitcher, you get both. Now here's Frazier who homered in his first at bat. <laughs> Every time you see it, you still think it was it was popped up, didn't you? Yeah, I'm shaking my head. He's out in his front foot. He's one hand in it, but he got backspin and he hit it to the place where the ball is carrying. Here's Rojas. Throwing out Frazier easily two out. Eight straight now for Grinky. And Joey Votto coming up. Votto missed 23 games. The lower quad. Came back uh, night before last. Doubled in his first at bat. And that lifted his average to 264. No balls in a strike. Like job security, Votto's got it. Signed through 2024. Out of Toronto, career 314 hitter, played every game last year. Of course, missed the 23 games this year with the quad issue. The 1-1 one -one inside. In 2010, Votto had quite a year. Hit 324 with 37 home runs and 113 runs batted in. Needless to say, he is will, is and will be a Reds lifer. So Joey Votto's a 314 career hitter. You were a 313 career hitter. Different ways to skin a cat. You're hacking at the first pitch, and this guy's taking, taking the world. That's why there's really no book on how to be successful in this game, right? That one ate up Rojas. A single the other way for Votto. He's two for two. But no matter what pitch you guys are swinging at, you guys are barreling it up an awful lot. Get a pitch you like, just like Votto did right there. If you can square it up and hit it hard, you like your chances. And that one, you definitely squared up and 
Rojas unable to come up with it. Really two identical swings. He just got the, the bat, the at bat before in the first inning when he hit the double, got the ball elevated a little bit, but hit them both in the same exact direction, right over the shortstop or at the shortstop. One went into the gap, one went through Rojas. And now Phillips, who bounced out in his first at bat, pops it up into short left. Kemp was there, and that'll do it. No runs and one base hit. We head to the fourth with the Reds leading it two to one. Net LA is brought to you by the Ram 1500 Motor Trend 2014 Truck of the Year and first ever back to back champion. On this Thursday matinee from the banks of the Ohio River, along with Alana Rizzo, Nomar Garcia Power, and Oral Hershiser, Charlie Steiner, we go to the fourth inning. Matt Kemp, Andre Ethier, and Tim Fedorovich. Kemp with a base hit. And an RBI in the first inning. Lifting his average to 251. With one out, Turner singled. So did Puig. And then with two out, Kemp singled. Now a ground ball to short and Cozart. Throws out Kemp. One pitch, one gone in the fourth. So both pitchers settled down after the first inning. The first inning for Alfredo Simon, he looked like he was overthrowing an awful lot, maybe having some nightmares about the last time the Dodgers knocked him out in three and two thirds. And this guy coming to the plate was the guy who had a lot to do with it with a triple and a home run. Triple was with the bases loaded. But he fouled out to Frazier in his first at bat. There's a strike, nothing in one. Eighth year on the trip, six for 18. One ball and one strike. Omar, you complimented Zach Greinke on your pregame hit back to the studio about how he just keeps the team in the game even when he is not at his best. Cozart to gone. That's all you can ask for from your starting pitcher. That's what's just so impressive. That's good pitchers. They go out there and especially like Zach Greinke who has good stuff. If you want to say that. But when they don't have it they still have give you a chance to win. That's what makes a good pitcher great. And Playing behind a guy like that, you see that, and you and you blame yourself. You're like, listen, he's battling every single time and giving us a chance, and we have to look at ourselves to say, how do we pick a guy like that up when you're playing behind him? Fedorovich, two out and nobody out. 
breaking ball for a strike. And I think from this inning forward, we really need to analyze the Dodger offense and see how they can patch it together against Simon to really try and squeak out some runs for Zach. This is one of those games where we have consistently talked about the way this team is going to get on a roll is for this offense to get more consistent. Mm -hmm. But it's not about putting up seven and eight spots. It's about winning these tight games. It's that situational hitting. Coming in and that one in like we got to score a run. Do they know how to produce a run when they need it? Trailing two to one Fedorovich strikes out swinging and that ends the inning. Eight in a row have now been retired by Simon Fedorovich down on strikes. Work set to the theme of electronic dance music. After the game against the Diamondbacks, fans are invited down onto the field to enjoy the show. Compliments of Denny's. For tickets to the game and the show, visit Dodgers.com slash promotions. So a three-game series with the Diamondbacks tomorrow night, Saturday and Sunday, and then Colorado comes in for three, and the Dodgers then turn around and hit the road again to San Diego and Kansas City. Jay Bruce bounced to second in his first at bat. On one hop, easy play to Adrian Gonzalez. One pitch, one out. So both pitchers have settled down after a shaky first innings for both. We said that Alfredo Simon was overthrowing. Was that cranky? Just got met with a, a bleeding blooper by Skip Schumacher in the first inning. Then Todd Frazier's routine fly ball to right turns out to be a home run. Joey Votto's double to left center was a scorcher. So you think the, the bloop and the double maybe gives up a run, but after that, he's been excellent. Finds himself down two to one. It could easily be a one one tie without the wind blown home run. Mezzarocco. And you're right. So far, the two hardest hit balls have been by Joey Votto. And like you said, that double on his next at bat when he hit that rocket to short. Other than that, there's been nothing. Two runs and four hits for the Reds. One run, four hits for the Dodgers. Mezzarocco, a strikeout victim in his first at bat. Are you around? Yep. First base umpire, Brian Knight. Roger Bernardina is on deck. Now, this is the last time the Dodgers and Reds will face one another this year. Dodgers have already won the season series. This is the seventh game, and the Dodgers have four victories to center field. Back goes Ethier a long way back. And at the wall, he makes the catch. Well, the ball travels much more freely and easily to right field than it does to center. This ball's 
hit a lot further, but just to the wrong part of the ballpark. If you're a Reds fan, Andre Ethier does not run out of room. Two out, nobody on. And Bernardina coming up. Simon has thrown 59 pitches through four innings. And the next pitch for Granke will be but his 48th. Cozart's on deck. Just foul. But there might have been a collision between the ball and the bag. It hits the bag. It's probably a base hit. Very hard for Adrian Gonzalez to uh, field it as it deflects to one direction or the other, or actually might come back at Bernadina. But fortunately for the Dodgers, it doesn't clip the bag. Cozart's on deck. Wind is beginning to pick up a little bit from left field toward right. Just what the pitchers need to know. And the hitters are giddy. Or when you went to ballparks and there's flags and you, you see the wind, did you know which flag to look at at every ballpark? And did you come out early to see to mm -hmm. see how you were going to approach that day? I watched batting practice for sure. And then also talk to my fielders during the game. What was the wind doing if it was a shifty type win? And then these this ballpark has pretty much a pattern to it. It's going to be blown out to right. But I'll tell you what you're part of the pitch selection in your mind when you get down to what you can command and how you want to get the hitter out is to what direction do I want the possible out. And it, it falls into your pitch selection. Two and two. D Gordon with those quick steps to his right throws out Bernardina and the inning is over. So we head to the fifth. Red still leading it two to one. Since the first when the Dodgers scored one run and three base hits will be facing Miguel Rojas Zach Greinke and then D Gordon in the fifth inning. Simon again such a pleasant surprise for Cincinnati. Coming into the season maybe the fifth man in the rotation maybe a swing man long guy out of the bullpen. Well, lo and behold. He like Greinke. Are in search of their ninth win of the season this year. A reliever, the last couple of years. And he's got some mustard on that 94 mile an hour fastball. It's nothing in one. Rojas bounced a single into center field in his first at bat. 
And is three for seven since his call up. In the hole at short. Cozart backhand play. Throw on to first. Good pick by Votto at the other end. Cozart and Votto come up with a gem. Well, Cozart does an excellent job getting to this ball, showing off the range here to his right and throwing off. But really, the great play here was the pick over there at Votto. But Votto at first base, not an easy ball to pick out of the dirt, but he stays with it and comes up with the gem. You made that play a lot. You didn't set your feet. You used the strength of your arm. A lot of strain on your arm making that throw? No, because it's really using my legs. It was about the legs. It was about my legs pushing off properly and also really the the torque of my torso that allowed me to whip my arm across and get the ball there. Granky the hitter. And I'm curious you were watching as we were uh, Tulowitzki in Colorado. Mm -hmm. How much of yourself did you see in him and how he went about his business on balls in the hole in particular throwing across the body. Well he Tulo is, has a great club. He really does. He's got some tremendous range on he, he what I like. I think what I see similar is he's not afraid to throw off the run. You see a lot more shortstop that really want to plant no matter what and, and which is fine. But he's not afraid to throw off the run whether he's going to his right going to his left. Feeling really comfortable. I like throwing off the run. I felt really comfortable doing that. Whether I'm charging the ball, even on a ball where maybe I could have an option of maybe sitting back, grabbing it, and, and fielding it, or if I can come charge it, I chose to charge it just because I felt more comfortable. And Tulo does that. I saw a lot of you in him this weekend. I was wondering if you did too. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, he's he's one of the great ones out there. He really is fun to watch and. Uh, you know what I always said about the position because they always used to compare Jeter, A Rod, myself, yeah, but so, is that you can go about a ground ball such as Kosar. We all went at it a different way and still made the out and were successful. There was no one way to do it. On one and two, swung out and missed strike three. Granky goes down. Third strikeout for Simon, two out and nobody on. And I'm thinking of two other Hall of Fame shortstops at that. One who played here. Barry Larkin, very conventional, not the least bit flashy. Cal Ripken, very conventional, not the least bit flashy. And they got the job done. Yep. Then another Hall of Famer, Ozzie Smith, who was very flashy <laughs> and amazing, but got the job done. Yeah. With two out and nobody on, here's D. Gordon. You know, during your years, we talked about it the other night. You and A. Rod and Jeter. There was always the fourth guy I thought who should have been in good. Ozzy, or rather Omar Vizquel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, as good it a just, defender as there was. Well, he, well, he, you know, they talked about us shortstops a lot because of what we provided in the offensive mm -hmm. side. And I think Omar just said, "Yeah, you can keep talking about all of them. I'll just keep taking all the Gold Gloves home." And speaking of a guy that was one of my favorite shortstops, right there, Jay Bell, and also not the least bit flashy. No, just got it done. This is going to be interesting. And by a half a step, Gordon is retired, and that ends the inning. Eleven in a row now retired by Simon at four and a half to one Cincinnati.
his first at bat. Since the retirement of Barry Larkin, we mentioned. The Reds have gone through 23 different shortstops. Cozart had quite a rookie year. Look at the company he keeps. <laughs> You know, you're in the all, penthouse. All, all three of them are in the building. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> you're in the penthouse, and Cozart's got a little walk-up. Yep. So here's Zach. At 222. There's a strike, and it's nothing in one. Alfredo Simon on deck. Meanwhile, Simon has retired 11 batters in a row. The 2-1 score has been that way since the first inning. Chopper to third. Justin Turner across the body. One out. Six since Zach Greinke gave up the base hit, the home run, and the double, the first three hitters. That took six pitches. Since then, he's faced 14 hitters. Got 13 of them out in 39 pitches. That is probably the most efficient I've had we've had this year with the Dodgers staff. Well, he threw 12 pitches in the second, 10 in the third, 9 in the fourth. And he's got an out here with on two pitches. And Simon, to be charitable, is not much of a hitter. Struck out in his first at-bat. He's been to the plate 24 times this year and has fanned nine times. Has two hits, a single, and a double. Get a sense he's not going to be at the plate long. Have a chance to have two outs on five pitches this inning. Schumacher on deck. And a great American ballpark home run. They've traveled 344 feet. First inning, Todd Frazier. That's the difference in the game. One and two. One thing about this inning is you get Simon out and Schumacher coming up being the veteran is probably going to take the first pitch to give Simon some time in the bench so you can steal a strike. Get a chance to have a really easy inning if you're Zach Greinke right here the way it sets up. One hop to Gordon and Simon will never reach first base. He feared off about 45 feet down the line with bat in hand. And now bat under arm. And now he puts the bat away. <laughs> you see Skip Schumacher taking kind of his taking time. his time, getting in the box. It's not like Simon has to catch his breath. Ran halfway. <laughs> Half a breath. One ball, no strikes to Schumacher, and predictably, Oral, he took a strike. He took a pitch anyway. Yeah, he'll probably take one more. The scary part right now is you get a close game and the wind is blown out to right field. You don't want to just assume he's taking. He wasn't. Rojas picks it up and throws him out. So now. Eight in a row have been retired. Make it seven in a row by Cranky. We go to the sixth.
see the Reds with a 2-1 to one lead over the Dodgers as we make our way to the top of the sixth inning. Justin Turner, Yasiel Puig, and Adrian Gonzalez do up in this inning. Yasiel Puig so far 1-for-2 today, but he was 0-for-4 last night with three punch-outs effectively ending a very impressive streak. The streak is over. He had reached base safely in 40 straight games via the hit, the walk, or an error as the longest streak by a Dodger since Rafael Fercal did it. In 2009, a streak of 41 games. During that streak, take a look at the numbers. 373 average, nine home runs, and he drove in 30, guys. Justin Turner fouls it back. As we begin the six, it'll be Turner as, and Puig and Gonzalez. Yeah, and as Alana said, those are impressive numbers. But I'll tell you, those numbers need to come out this inning. As I look at this lineup, and you mentioned, we talked about it, Oral, about this Dodger lineup having to come up big, figuring out how to get those runs in those late innings. And six inning here against Simon. They have to figure out how to get a run here and in the seventh because eighth and ninth, when I look at that, we know this bullpen, back end of the bullpen for Cincinnati with Broxton and Aroldis back there, very difficult. So these are critical innings right now. So it's just the sixth inning, but this is where the battle could well be won. Mm -hmm. Again, Broxton threw 29 pitches last night, so whether or not he's good to go, we'll find out. But certainly it was not much of a test for Chapman 15 pitches as he uh, dispatched with the Dodgers easily in the ninth last night. So one run is enormous as Simon has retired 11 batters in a row. Turner one for two has scored the only run of the game fouls it back. And also you have the heart of your lineup coming up. And that's that's the other big thing about it because. You know this is what you. You feel like okay. These are this is where we get to score that run. Here it is. These are the guys we count on, and it's just a matter. It's not a matter. You don't have to. Re, you can't rely on the home run or the long ball. It's, you know, string a few hits together. It's, Turner hit by pitch. There's a start. And on this Thursday afternoon in Cincinnati, the bottom third of the lineup is Fedorovich, 0 for 2, hitting. About 110, and then Rojas, and then the pitcher. So this is the time. Got it on the forearm. Meanwhile, it's the first Dodger base runner since the Rojas single in the second inning. And here is Pui. Single to right. Fly to left. And bounces. There's one. And not in time. Well, speed never goes into a slump, that old baseball cliche. And had it not been for Puig and the speed and busting it out of the box, it's a double play. What a great play by Brandon Phillips right there that in between hop and I mean over there at shortstop questionable whether Zach Cozart was on the bag when he gets this ball but nonetheless I mean nice pick stay looked like he did drag that foot and stays on it which was impressive. Glad to see Yasiel hustling down the line. Well that's one thing about Pui. he is always immediately out of the box. Taking that big first step. And he's got the speed. Now does Puig think about stealing a base? Puig has stolen seven out of eleven. Well, the Dodgers made need to employ some small ball to get back into the game. Gonzalez is 0 for 2. Average down to 248. Wide to right and bounced to short. And this is one of those games when the Dodgers win, they score six or more runs, it seems. And when they lose, it's three or less. And they're trailing two to one. There's been no happy medium for this team this year. It seems to be either or. They're third in the league in runs and third in the league in hits.
shut out on five hits last night. Six runs and 12 hits on Tuesday night. Six runs and 10 hits on Monday night. Six runs and six hits on Sunday afternoon. And then they scored four in Colorado on Saturday. Another quick toss to first base. Very close play. We know Yasiel doesn't like to slide. <laughs> I mean, we've seen that over the course of this road trip, but he does just get back in there. Another close play. Not sliding back head first. He's limiting the length of his lead. That crossover step and jump with your leg is definitely shorter. Yeah, yep, he's not going. And he's almost picked off. That was, that was actually smart by Yasiel. He was thinking about going. He wanted a steal. That wasn't just a bluff, but he recognized he didn't get a good jump right there. He, you'll see there he, he takes off and he stops. If he had gone there, I think it would have been if a good throw or just a decent throw would get him. But like I said, he, he was all he was thinking about. He wanted to steal that bag, just not a good enough jump. 2 and 0 to Gonzalez and yet another toss to first base. Mesoraco has thrown out 3 of 15. Two balls and a strike to Adrian Gonzalez. Nice piece of hitting right there by Adrian. 2-0, get the head out and use that hole over there with Yasiel still on first base. Remember there was a man on first and a smart left-handed hitter up. If I was going to give him anything to pull, I was going to make sure they pulled it foul like Adrian just did. Two balls and a strike. Two and two. Immediately after the game, the Dodgers fly home and have a weekend series with the Diamondbacks. 7 10 tomorrow night, Saturday night, 1 10 Sunday afternoon. Chase Anderson, 5 0 for Arizona against Clayton Kershaw. That is Friday night fireworks. Tomorrow night, there goes Puig. The 2 2 swung on a miss, strike three, throw to second base, strike him out. Throw him out. A double play in the sixth inning. Gonzalez's troubles continue. 53rd time he's been struck out this year. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. To the bottom of the sixth we go. Cincinnati 2-1. to one.
at Dodger Stadium on Saturday for Tommy Lasorda bobblehead night. First 50,000 fans in attendance take home a mini Brooklyn throwback. Tommy for their collection compliments of State Farm. For tickets visit Dodgers.com slash promotions. So on this Thursday afternoon the Reds first three hitters went three for three. The next 16 combined for one hit. Two to one they lead is Frazier who hit the home run in the first inning. Takes high and away one ball and no strikes. It was not exactly a uh, monumental blast. It was about a foot over the fence in right center that traveled all of 344 feet. Location, location, location. Well, you see that breaking ball on the outer half, and <laughs> Frazier just kind of out in front a little bit, just gets it on the barrel and let the elements help him out and carry it over the wall. And the fireworks ensue. Frazier go around, knows says first base umpire Brian Knight. Two balls and a strike. So Frazier, Votto, and Phillips to bat for Cincinnati in the bottom of the sixth. It's getaway day for both clubs. Dodgers head home. And Cincinnati heads up to Milwaukee. They trail the Brewers by eight games in the National League Central. So that's a huge series for the Reds. They need to get off the mat. If you're the Cincinnati Reds, let's have them wait a day. Frazier beside the home run is bounced to short. And Grinky's 64th pitch is up and in. First walk of the game given up by Grinky. And just the 18th he's given up this year in 84 innings. Frazier's swing is close on this one. Of all the walks you're going to give up, this is the worst kind. Other than walking a guy in with the bases loaded, the leadoff walk. Sometimes you strategically walk people the base open a man on second maybe two out one out to get around a key hitter but lead off walk Rick Honeycutt will tell you we don't coach that one up Votto two for two swings and misses it's nothing in one both pitchers after the first inning have been Beyond solid. Total of three runs and eight hits in the game between the two clubs. The Frazier two run home run the difference. The Dodger offense has two innings left where they're going to face something less than a hundred mile an hour fastball. And the ninth inning awaits 99 to about 102 down there with Araldis Chapman. So the Dodgers have a couple innings to face mere mortals. <laughs> exactly. Chapman in 13 appearances this year has struck out 26 and walked three. How many innings is that? Oh, 14. <laughs> Almost two an inning. He's given up two runs and four hits in 14 innings. That's what awaits the Dodgers at the finish line. Two balls and two strikes to Votto. Brandon Phillips on deck and Bruce to follow. Looking ahead to the seventh, Kemp, Ethier, and Fedorovich. Dodgers think Hanley Ramirez can possibly pinch hit today. Got that right shoulder is barking. Van Slyke is on the bench. And then after that, you got Romack and Figgins and Buter. Van Slyke, of course. Had that big night on Monday. 
two home runs, a single, two walks, four runs batted in. Best offensive night of his career. Big conference on the mound with Zach Greinke and FedEx. I think they're talking about what are the next two pitches, not just what is this pitch, but this is an important pitch because you keep the double play in order in the 2 2 count. Reds will probably start Frazier in the 3 2 count with Votto's eye. Gordon, Rojas, Gonzalez. 4 6 3, 2 out. Well, we've seen in this inning two nice plays by the defense for both pitchers and by the second baseman. The Brandon Phillips had a nice play in that last half inning and then D Gordon coming up big for Zach Granke here getting that ball and flipping it over there to Rojas and turning a nice double play. Yeah, he makes that double play routine because of how hard he charges the ball. If he lays back now he puts Rojas in harm's way and makes Rojas make a serious turn to complete the double play. But D. Gordon took the responsibility himself by charging that and getting on the short hop. March seems so long ago when second base was up for grabs. And then about the, the second week of spring, D. Gordon took the job and it's his. And now he's second in the National League in all star voting. Two out. And Phillips 0 for 2. Fouls it off to the right. Jay Bruce on deck. Granky at 71 pitches. Simon has thrown 80 through 6. And all the offense took place in the first. Can't beat your Puig straight away for Phillips. Has four home runs, 23 runs batted in. Chopper to short. Rojas throws out Phillips, and that ends the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. We head to the seventh. The Reds continue to cling to a two to one lead. To bat for the Dodgers in the seventh. And of course, this Sunday is Father's Day. And come on out to the ballpark when the Dodgers take on the Diamondbacks at 110. First 40,000 fans in attendance receive a sports bag. And after the game, dads and their families are invited onto the field to play a game of catch. All compliments of Avita Water. For tickets, visit Dodgers.com slash promotions. So the Dodgers, who have trailed by one. Since the first, have nine outs remaining to figure out to come where to come up with a run or two. Kemp is one for two. He drove in the only run of the game. 
Gordon began it by bouncing to first and Turner and Puig would single after Gonzalez fly to right. Kemp with a single to center his 19th run batted into the year. And since then the Dodgers have had two base runners. One by a hit and Turner was hit by a pitch. As Kemp has to get out of the way. One ball no strikes. This could be an inning for Don Mattingly to use some strategy. Zach Greinke of course. A few batters away but you can hit for Fedorovic and you can hit for Rojas. You've got Hanley Ramirez that can hit on the bench. You've got Sean Figgins that can play some defense if it happened to be Rojas who you hit for. And I would think if the game was in balance. And there were some runners on they would hit for Greinke for sure. Two balls and no strikes. Kemp beginning the seventh. With a base hit into center. So Kemp is two for three. Now the wheels start turning. The last two innings, sixth and the seventh, they've gotten the leadoff runner on base. And got to figure out a way how to get them in. We mentioned how these were going into them, how important these innings are in this game. Ethier has fouled a third and popped to short. Of course, had the big game against Simon last month back at Dodger Stadium. Bases loaded triple and a home run. One ball, no strikes. The Reds bullpen is quiet for the moment. Reds of course have a big weekend series with Milwaukee. They trail the Brewers by eight. They've got an eye on the Dodgers and an eye on a three game series in Milwaukee. Pass Votto into right field. Kemp will go to third and the Dodgers are in business. Runners at the corners. Nobody out. Well, that is a huge hit. Not only moving Kemp around but doing it without giving up an out. Well, Andre Ethier finding the hole here. Ball on the inner half gets that barrel out there and drives it past the diving Vado. Good read also by Matt Camp, recognizing where the outfielders were as he's looking. Didn't even have to pick up his third base coach, knowing he can get all the way to third. Now it's in the hands of Fedorovich to get a ball up in the zone, look for something he can get out there in the air and try to drive Matt Camp in. So the tying run 90 feet away. There's nobody out in the seventh inning. Fedorovich has bounced to the pitcher and struck out swinging. Price willing to sacrifice a run for two outs. So he's got his infield back hoping for the double play and Fedorovich takes outside. One ball no strikes. Interesting to see who the Dodgers get up in the bullpen in case they want to hit for Granke. Do they get up J.P. Hall because Jay Bruce leads off the next inning or do they save J.P. for a possible Joey Votto confrontation later. Saturday Fedorovich at that big home run and there's a short fly ball into right and Votto makes the catch. Kemp's not going anywhere. Couldn't go anywhere. You know, you had Jay Bruce charging hard on that ball. He got behind it, had his momentum behind it as he's charging in for it, and there's nothing, nowhere Matt can go. He has to stay there at third base, and, and Bruce drew it perfectly in hitting the cutoff. You see him, he's behind it, fields it, makes a good, strong throw into the infield. Too shallow to do anything about it. So that's one out. And now Rojas. Cranky in the on deck circle for the moment. Open beginning to shuffle around just a little bit. Rojas with a ground ball to third backhanded by Frazier and caught in a rundown is Kemp. Out. 
gone to third and safe is Ethier. There's two out. But Kemp does a good job staying in the rundown. Ethier does a good job squeaking into third. And Rojas couldn't follow Ethier to second because he was running through the bag at first because he didn't want to be doubled up. Then when the bobble comes, he's going all the way through the bag so he can't stop his momentum. Kemp does a nice job hanging up right here. He's waving Ethier over and just avoid that tag right there. That little bit gives Ethier enough to get into third base. Well, they're out there right now questioning whether Ethier actually got into third base and was able to get underneath that tag. And you may look at Kemp looking at Ethier to try to get him over there. He's doing his job. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. That little squirm at the end that made him reach for the tag. Yeah, right there. Just yes. enough time. That little bit of squirm. Not giving up on the tag. Got barely in there. Oh. And the presence of mind of Frazier after he bobbled it. Got with a bare hand and didn't rush it at all. So he played under control. Well, they really need this run. I mean, this really has been the demise of the Dodgers this year. The inability to get that runner in from third base with less than two outs. I mean, I recall that game against Colorado where they, you know, they did an excellent job. Fedorovich gets that big home run, and then Matt Camp leads off the next inning with the triple, and they can't knock him in. That was on Saturday when Ethier, Turner, and Fedorovich grounded out after the leadoff triple by Kemp. And now here's Van Slyke, pinch hitting with two out. This is after the Dodgers had first and third and nobody out. And of course that now means that Granke is out of the game. It's up to Van Slyke. J.P. Howell is warming in the Dodger bullpen. First and third, two out. So leadoff hits for Kemp and Ethier. Now the Dodgers really face it. But probably the most important at it is the most important at bat of the game. They've had the Reds on the ropes. Check swing, and it's nothing in two. If the Dodgers can score a run here, they feel good about themselves. If not, they're going to be looking at their shoes for the next couple of innings. Balls and two strikes. One and two. An inning of great expectations. If you believe in momentum in this game, this at bat is probably going to determine it.
Dodgers woulda, coulda, shoulda, and what might have been. First and third, nobody out of the seventh, trailing two to one, and they can't cash in a run. We go to the bottom of the seventh. J.P. Howell is now on in relief after Granky goes six, gives up two earned runs and four hits, three strikeouts, and a walk. Don't pin the wrap on him. 72 pitches, 49 for strikes. Bruce is 0 for 2 as Howell is making his 31st appearance of the year. It's been 2 to 1 since the first inning. And the Dodgers with a glorious opportunity to tie the score in the top half. Bruce Mezzarocco and Bernardino to bat in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Nice crowd on this Thursday afternoon in Cincinnati as the sun is breaking through really for the first time. It's been overcast and muggy all day. Two and one. Bruce with a home run last night. It was his fifth of the year. Two and two. So now the Dodgers have to regroup. Yeah, you mentioned it, Charlie, right after that one. They said, listen, if he is able to get that out right there, that really would change the momentum if you believe in it. And you believe in it? I do. Yes. Yeah. I'm a firm believer in it. Mm -hmm. These are not robots playing this game. And that's where, you know, you, you talk about the arguments, the saber metrics and all of that. There are moments in a game, you throw stats aside, all right, he struck out, but now the general feel of a, a ball club going in, knowing that there is Chapman at the finish line, that was their moment. Now, that's not to say they can't do something in the eighth, but at the moment, there's a feeling of a deflated balloon on the Dodgers' side. Gordon a couple of steps on the outfield. Grass Bruce retired. There's no question about that. I mean, the opposing team when they're saying, well, here's our opportunity because they know that because, listen, for all this Chapman is in your mind. You know what they have. For the longest time, that's why I always said for the Yankees, Mariano Rivera was such a value to have back there because you knew that going in when you were playing them. Is that don't forget who they have on the back end. Here is our chance. That's why I said these closers are capable of shortening the game for your team when they're on your team. Not only do they do it physically, but psychologically to the yes. other side. Brandon League now warming to the Dodger pen. And a call strike, nothing in one. And when we were talking about it. We were up here. We were saying because of that factor say hey six and seventh are important innings right now as you look at the way this game is progressing. And, and in the sixth out, inning right. sixth inning the Dodgers had a lead off runner aboard. Didn't work out a strike him out throw him out to end the sixth. And then first and third nobody out in the seventh. End up shooting blanks. Mezzarocco 0 for 2. Now one ball, two strikes. It'll be the top of the order for the Dodgers in the eighth. Alfredo Simon has given up one run and six base hits. And just 92 pitches through seven. Howell on one and two. This is outside. Well, when you look at the numbers so far for Alfredo Simon, once again, is having another quality outing, having a good day. But I also look at the Dodgers, just their inability to capitalize on opportunities. And again, it's one of the uh, we've beaten this number to death. But after a while, it's it's so when they when they win, they score six runs and ten hits or thereabouts. When they lose, it's about three and a half runs and seven hits. Well, they haven't gotten to either one of those numbers yet. Oh, well, it's. We talked to it talked about it amongst ourselves numerous times. It's their inability to for those tight ball games. There's real close games to figure out a way to pull those out. 
whether it's going into extra innings, whether it's those one run games going down to the late innings, the seventh, eighth, and ninth. You know, you pointed out the other day, you had uh, Matt Kemp, the leadoff triple. Oh, yeah. And couldn't get the ball out of the infield. They would lose in 10. They're down 2 1, first and third, nobody out here in the seventh. And couldn't punch across the tying run. There's a Rocco down on strikes, two out. That's Sam LaCure warming in the Cincinnati pen. As frustrating as it is, things are frustrating because you're so close and right on the edge of getting it done. And that's what continues to give the team and management hope that they're going to get on a run because these some of these losses have been so squeaky. And they still got a chance here today, but that was a huge opportunity that went by the wayside in the seventh. Their inability to knock in Kemp on Saturday in that 10 inning game cost them a win on the trip. They're four and two on this road trip. Yeah, you knock that one in. I mean, it. I think it, I truly think that would have changed, and we'd be sitting here going into today five and one. Instead, they're trailing two to one with two out. Zach Cozart is on deck. Lecure warming in the Cincinnati bullpen. Gordon Turner and Puig coming up. And there is a strike to Bernadina. It's one and two. The one two on the way outside. Come in the dugout and start trying to find different ways to encourage your teammates, especially as a starting pitcher. You're just sitting there, Clayton Kershaw, if it's Dan Heron, whoever it is, and you know, let's get some runs. Come on, you guys can do it. And after a couple innings where you get the leadoff guy on, and then the next inning, you get a guy all the way over to third with no outs. You're just searching for something that has some integrity when you yell it. Rojas makes the play. That ends the inning. So the Dodgers now are down to their final six outs and they've got Gordon Turner and Puig coming up trailing the Reds two to one. Of the eighth, Gordon Turner and Puig after the game this afternoon. The Dodgers fly home for a weekend series with the Diamondbacks. If you take a look at the calendar, brought to you by 76 tomorrow night, Saturday night, Sunday afternoon. Then the Rockies are in Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday nights. And then the Dodgers hit the road for San Diego and Kansas City.
Gordon 0 for 3. Simon has been terrific. Holding the Dodgers to a run and six hits. Dodgers squander a glorious scoring opportunity in the seventh, first, and third. Nobody out. A shallow fly to right off the bat of Fedorovic. Rojas grounds out. Play at the plate. Kemp a race there. And then Van Slyke pinch hitting. Wood strikeout. What might have been. So the Dodgers now down to their final six outs. One ball, one strike to Gordon, who has not gotten the ball out of the infield today. One and two. Because of the two rallies, the middle of the order's got a chance at Simon again or somebody other than Chapman because they've turned the lineup over a little quicker and gotten these. Middle of the order, at least Turner and Puig and Gonzalez might get a shot before Chapman's in in the ninth. Well, two yeah. balls, two strikes. And then we go back to yesterday's game when Broxton came into that ball game. The, the lineup really made him work and throw a lot of pitches, is probably the reasons why we don't see him in today's game. If you can capitalize here in the eighth, you can credit that to a lot of the work they did yesterday, even though it was a loss. Broxton threw 29 pitches in an inning and two thirds last night. So you've got LaCure the righty and Para the lefty in the red bullpen. Well, that was going to be at least a double. But foul by a foot. Because of the blazing speed of D. Gordon. A base hit into the right field corner is pretty near an automatic triple, although that bounced off the sidewall. We say it all the time. In his case, a walk's as good as a double. So getting on base for the Dodger leadoff hit are really imperative here in the eighth inning. To second base. First out. Now Justin Turner's coming up. Turner singled in the first inning after Gordon had bounced out. Then Puig singled to right, and after Adrian Gonzalez flied to right, Kemp with a single to center, driving in the only run of the game. But the Dodger lead would be short lived. Schumacher leading off today for the Reds in left field, single to center. And Todd Frazier hit a home run to right field. So it's been two to one ever since. Neither team has done well in one run games this year. The Dodgers are seven and eleven. The Reds are eleven and fourteen. Only the Mets have more one run losses than the Reds do. In the right. And it drops in for a hit. Justin Turner with two of the Dodgers five hits today. And he continues to be a valuable asset. Got a lot more playing time when Arebe went down, but the stretch that he's had with this opportunity, he's going to find himself in the everyday lineup even when Arebe is back. I don't know if it'll be in one spot, but he'll find his way in there. Let me correct myself. The Dodgers have one run and seven hits, and Turner has got two of them. So here's Puig. Of course, he is the lead run at the plate. 11 home runs and 40 runs batted in. One ball, no strikes to Yasiel Puig. When Yasiel loves the stage, he loves this at bat. He loves to play, but boy, does he love the big moments. A little 
little bit shocked here to see Simon still in this game because he doesn't have a whole lot of strikeouts in this game, but you're giving the middle part of this lineup an opportunity, possibly see him four times. And you have a righty lefty warming up in the bullpen. They're very confident in Broxton and Chapman, but other than that, they are hoping. We well, hasn't hit a home run in two weeks. And a ground ball to third. There's one. And again, the speed keeps it from being a double play. Justin Turner helped you know, Seals speed and went in hard into second base. Puig, by the way, his last home run was against the Reds back at Dodger Stadium on May 28th. Mattingly in discussion with second base umpire Jim Reynolds. See why Mattingly's upset out there. He's going out there and see, as you can see on the replay, that Phillips wasn't on the bag when he caught the ball and then threw to first base because he was kind of jumping for that ball. And that's what Mattingly's saying. But there's also that neighborhood play that's involved when it comes to plays around second base and turning it. Well, the neighborhood plays, though, with a conventional throw right at your chest, a nice that's feed, and exactly. you're allowed to kind of have the benefit of the doubt but that ball was high and, and that's why Mattingly's out there too like will you check that because of the fact that the ball was up mm -hmm. have a look at Carl's cam on the play at second. It's a big neighborhood. <laughs> Two out and Adrian Gonzalez. Oh for three two out and Gonzalez grounds to second and Phillips flips to Cozart. Well, that's that. No runs one hit one left. We go to the bottom of the eighth with the Reds leading the Dodgers two to one. Outstanding day's work. He leaves with a two to one lead. And Brandon League is now on in relief for the Dodgers. So Simon in his eight innings today, one run, seven hits, five strikeouts, no walks, 104 pitches, 68 of them for strikes. 
And here is Brandon League making his 27th appearance of the year. Brandon has been outstanding. His role has started to be altered. He's it was definitely at the beginning of the season just the kind of guy who was going to come in and eat some innings and usually when the team was down he's been so consistently sharp now that he has inherited the ball in tie games and a few times with the lead. He'll be facing Zach Cozart. And it looks like Billy Hamilton in the on deck circle. And then Skip Schumacher. On this Thursday matinee in Cincinnati, 33,557 in attendance. One ball, no strikes to Cozart, is 0 for 2 today. Base hit into the left field corner, and Cozart's on his way to second base. Leadoff double in the bottom half of the eighth inning for Cozart, his 11th two base hit of the year. Well, this ball just kind of tails in on Cozart and also up in the zone. We know for Brandon Lee to be effective, he has to pitch down in the zone, utilizing that movement. Cozart does a good job bringing those hands in nicely and getting it down the line. So that's an enormous insurance run as difficult as it's been for the Dodgers to score any runs today. And Billy Hamilton right here I was watching him in the on deck circle and as the ball was going into the left field corner he was picking up his skipper. And they were talking already about the bunt. So there will be no signs given here other than out there to second base to Cozart. Hamilton was verbally told, I think, to bunt. So Justin Turner is already pretty near halfway in on the grass at third. Hamilton squares. The, the Dodgers elect to go with that wheel. Let's see if they think about doing it again because oftentimes when you do a short once if you go back to it again the batter will pull that bat back and try to slash because the middle of the field is left wide open. Rojas was sprinting toward third base as Turner was coming in. Of course that vacates the entire left side of the infield. That's what they're doing and it's putted up the first baseline. Gonzalez has to hurry and he throws out Gordon. But Cozart goes to third with the perfectly executed sacrifice. His outstanding bunt by Billy Hamilton because with the wheel play on, you don't want to bunt the ball to third because that's where the most aggressive charging will come from. So he bunts the ball to first, which is unconventional with a man on second, unless you know the defense is being aggressive from the third base side. Hamilton's fourth sacrifice bunt that has to bring the Dodger infield in and Schumacher the former Dodger with a chance to tack on a run for the Reds inside and low and it gets past Fedorovich in to score is Kozart and the Reds lead three to one. Well, Brandon League had thrown all sinking fastballs throughout this inning and now with a man on third goes to a split finger and the first split finger of the inning overthrows it probably a little too much tension on the grip it's a hard pitch to develop a feel for with a man on third being your first one and for the Reds their third run Kemp Ethier and Fedorovich are the hitters in the ninth And if the Dodgers are unable to come from behind, they will look back at a sixth inning when they got the leadoff runner aboard. Turner would be hit by a pitch. 
Puig would ground out, then a strike him out, throw him out, double play. But the real dagger to the heart came in the seventh when Kemp and Ethier began the inning with singles, first and third, nobody out. Fedorovich, a shallow fly to right. Rojas grounded out. Kemp thrown out at the plate on a rundown. Van Slyke would strike out with runners at the corners, and that was a key moment in the game. Three and one to Schumacher. Three and two. Alfredo Simon today tied a career high by going eight innings. One run and seven hits. Five strikeouts, no walks. 104 pitches, 68 for strikes. And into left center field, Ethier's got a long way to run. He can't get it. Schumacher on his way to second base, and he will get it into second. Once again, this ball up in the zone. We mentioned about the leadoff double by Kozart. The ball was up in the zone. This one, Schumacher waits for it, stays behind it, and drives it to left center. Momentum. For Schumacher, his fourth double of the year. Todd Frazier a home run in three plate appearances. He's bounced to short and has walked. Did not go around according to Brian Knight. Frazier leads the Reds in home runs and RBIs 14 and 34. To third. Turner. Throws low, dug out by Gonzalez. Two out. This is the last thing on earth the Dodgers want to see. Aralvis Chapman and his 102 mile an hour fastball. And his 26 strikeouts and three walks. Gonna walk Votto to face Phillips. So Ryan Ludwig will come up and pinch hit. Is pinch hitting. Brandon Phillips hurt himself on the slide at second base when uh, Justin Turner went in hard and then Don Mattingly came out and argued. Ludwig has never faced league before. And so it's first and second and two out. Ludwig 248. Strike, nothing and one. Dodgers four and two on this road trip. But one loss just filled with shoulda, wouldas, and couldas. And this one, barring a ninth inning comeback, will be another one. Amen. 
Ludwig in his 10th big league season came up with Texas then on to Cleveland and St. Louis San Diego Pittsburgh and Cincinnati. In 2008 37 home runs and 113 runs batted in and he lines up face it into left center. In comes Schumacher. Ludwig delivers 4 1 Cincinnati. Fado goes to third. Uh, well, Ludwig just went down on that ball and got to it. Only problem with that pitch was just that it was in the middle of the plate and not on the corner. But for Brandon League, it was at least down. And sometimes you got to give the batter a little bit of credit for Ludwig staying on that and driving it. Ramon Santiago pinch running for Ludwig. So he'll come in and play second base in the bottom of the ninth. Jay Bruce 0 for 3. Momentum. Seventh inning. You are so right, Charlie. You don't capitalize on your opportunities and you get a flat tire and then the other team feels like it's their turn to knock you back down and that's what the Reds did. Gordon will throw out Bruce but not before the Reds tack on two huge insurance runs. Last licks for the Dodgers. They go to the ninth, trailing 4 1. But Fedorovich with a shallow fly ball to right. Kemp couldn't go anywhere. Rojas bounced to third. Frazier to the plate. And Kemp would be tagged out. And then Van Slyke would strike out. At that point, the Dodgers trailed two to one. The swing of emotion was palpable. So was the momentum. And so here are the Dodgers in the top half of the ninth. Hoping to come back against Araldus Chapman. They'll be sending Kemp, Ethier, and Fedorovich to the plate. Dodgers needing three runs to tie. In 14 innings this year, Chapman has given up two runs and four hits. When you have great arm speed like he does at 99 to 102 miles an hour on the fastball. You put that into the slider. 
And he throws a slider at the speed of most big leaguers fastball. Throw that slider at 91 92. 89. You can average it easy. If he decides to take a little off. Roger Bernardino moves from center. To left Billy Hamilton who came in and had that beautiful sacrifice bunt in center field and Santiago replaces Brandon Phillips at second base in the ninth. Matt Kemp will lead it off. Against Araldus Chapman. Ninety nine nothing in one. Dodgers barring a comeback will fly home with a sour taste in their mouth. Going four and three on the series away from Dodger Stadium splitting the four games here taking two of three from Colorado. But these are two teams with losing records. These are teams that Dodgers should be beating. Charlie, you talked about the woulda, coulda, shoulda, and this is things for team chemistry. Nomar and I talk about it. You have to talk about these things out loud. You can't have little small conversations in the food room or in the locker room or on the team bus. You have to talk about it as a group because people will see it as whispering and backstabbing compared to we're all on the same page and we're all pushing to fix this. Rollis Chapman by the way has retired the last 22 batters he has faced. But he falls behind three and one. So statistically everything's going against the Dodgers. They trail by three against one of the preeminent closers in the game who has retired the last 22 batters he has faced and given up two runs and four hits in 14 innings this year. Three and two. A free and easy hundred miles an hour. But it's a walk. And Matt Kemp once again doing an excellent job not only taking that walk but getting being the leadoff batter and getting on base. If Ethier gets aboard then the tying run comes to the plate in Fedorovich. Chapman has given up a home run this year. 100 miles an hour upstairs. Ethier today is one for three. He singled the right in the seventh. 101. That's great. Got a guy coming in. He was throwing 99. He's like, I'm just not warmed up just yet. <laughs> Gotta get loose. Yeah. Now I'm feeling better. 101. A hundred and one in the shade. Amazing velocity and amazing location. Yeah, as a hitter, you're going, okay, first of all, I got to catch up to 101. Second, now you're just going to go out there and hit the outside corner. A base hit headed toward the left field corner. Fedorovich will hold at first as Kemp trots into third base. An accomplishment to bring the tying run to the plate in this inning. Fedorovich one for four. A 
white and wait and try and hit the slider, you know you're going to get something really hard, get it started early, and that's real early when you can pull that down the line. Here's Rojas with Romack in the on deck circle. Nothing in one. So Kemp Walk, eighth year struck out on a 101 mile an hour fastball that was on the outer edges of the plate. Fedorovich with a single to left. And Rojas fouls it back. And it's nothing in two. Well, Hanley Ramirez must not be available because I think he would be hitting right here if his shoulder would allow him to hit. Because you could hit for Rojas and even if Hanley can't play defense you could have Sean Figgins come in the game and play defense. So Romack in the on deck circle. One ball two strikes. To Miguel Rojas. That's Kemp. That's Fedorovich. And this is Rojas. Pulled the string at 90. There's Hanley on the bench. Just on the other side of Carl Crawford there he is next to Juan Uribe. Sunflower seeds in hand so. He does not look like he is getting ready to play. Here comes the one two. Slicing. And out of play. Good try by Bruce. Oh. The two kids got a a glove sandwich. So Rojas is the tying run at the plate. And he goes down swinging. Jamie Romack. Coming up. After Rojas goes down. What a story if he could pop one out of here. 12 years in the minors. Get a chance to hit off a 100 mile an hour fastball. One for 11 so far in your career. Be a nice one home run and five RBIs. Fedorovich goes to second on a defensive shrug of the shoulders. Nothing in one to Romack. Two out in the ninth. A two run bottom of the eighth. As Cincinnati up 4 1. Hundred and two miles an hour. Milwaukee awaits Cincinnati. The Dodgers head home to face the Diamondbacks tomorrow night. Second and third, two out. Dodgers down to their final strike. Out of better than 33,000 on their feet.
One and two. High and away, two balls and two strikes. Chapman in search of his 10th save of the year. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Homeward bound to the Dodgers, losing four to one on this Thursday afternoon in Cincinnati. Chapman recording his 10th save. As Alfredo Simon wins his ninth game of the year. The Dodgers hit the road or head home after a four and three road trip. Lexus player of the game, the starting pitcher Alfredo Simon, who for the fourth time in his career, the second time this season, went eight innings. He wins his ninth. Gave up a run in seven hits, struck out five, did not walk anybody. 104 pitches, 68, four strikes. So the Dodgers head home, downcast, winning four of seven on the road, but a couple of games they felt like they should have won. That is a wrap for us here from the Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati, where the Reds beat the Dodgers this afternoon. Four to one. Four runs, seven hits, no errors. Reds left four. One run, eight hits, no errors. The Dodgers left eight. For Alana Rizzo, Oral Hershiser, no more Garcia Parra, Charlie Steiner saying good night and goodbye. We'll see you tomorrow. Now we send it to Access Sportsnet Dodgers.